Ayub Ali says, what is your thoughts on reincarnation, right? And he says, based on the Quran, reincarnation. The answer is, is it yes or no? Is it there or not? We are going to find out, right? <laughs> so what is your thoughts on reincarnation? First of all, we don't find the word itself in the Quran which states reincarnation, right? Uh, we don't we don't find that word particularly reincarnation. But when we say reincarnation, first of all, let's find out the meaning first. <laughs> when we say reincarnation, we are talking about the embodiment in a new form, right? Especially the reappearance or a person in another form. So when we say reincarnation in the Quranic concept, it is to go in another realm. <laughs> Whilst on the day of judgment, God will raise you up with a new body and everything. I will give you verses to, to, to give you that answer. But when people mention reincarnation, this is what they mean. When we are talking to like the public, when they say reincarnation, what they actually mean is the, a second or a new birth. Like a person who has lived and died on this earth and then is given birth again as a new birth. On this same earth, this is what people usually ask us uh, in the place of reincarnation. But as you know, one word can have multiple meanings in every concept, right? So you just need to see that the subject of discussion and context in which such words are used. Uh, in the Hindu or Buddhist doctrine, they believe that a person may be reborn successfully into one of five classes of living beings a person can either be reborn as a god or a human or an animal either a cow or ghosts or denizen of hell right so in hindu beliefs or buddhist beliefs they believe this can be that that realistic right some people will say Buddhism is not a religion. It is a religion because you have to put your faith in something, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So, coming back to the notion of reincarnation, it just depends on, on which stance you actually mean by reincarnation. Yes, on the Day of Judgment, God will reincarnate us by creating a new body in front of God. We will stand for trials, right? That is another form of reincarnation, but not in the concept of the way people think reincarnation as to be given birth on the same earth here. So let's see some of the verses from the Quran. Uh, first of all, I take you to Quran chapter 36 verse 31, right? And I will share the screen as usual so that we get to see what the verse says, right? Uh, so Quran chapter 36 verse 31. I'm oh, sorry. <clears throat> what I do is I take the camera off and I put this bigger enough. So like this. And we go like that. So, it says, Have they not seen how many of the generations we have annihilated, right? Before them, that is them, the people that wrongdoers, that they the annihilated will not, what, return to them. God is asking a question in Quran chapter 36 verse 1, verse 31, right? Have they not seen? If you read the context, you can see on top here it's talking about the bad people who did you know wrong, right? So here it says, Have they not seen how many of the generations we have annihilated before them that they that the annihilated will not return to them? So in the case of retaining is out of the equation. According to God, you, they, those people who have been annihilated are not going to return. Right? They are not returning. 
right? So that is that is the first case. They are not going to return. That is the first case. Okay. Now, the next uh, thing I'll just take you before that, the next verse I'll be going before that is, we can see clearly in Quran chapter 36 verse 31, according to God, those who have been annihilated, they are never going to return. So there is nothing, no reincarnation for such people. Where God will say, oh, Fra'auna was annihilated in the past. So he is going to be reincarnated. Uh, the people of uh, uh, no, Noah, or the, the people of Lut, or the people of, uh, uh, let's say, Thamud, that is the so people of Hud, people of Shrain, Median, they were annihilated. Are they going to return? The answer is no. According to the Quran, they are never going to return on this earth. No. Right? So if somebody tells you there's a notion of reincarnation, right? Just ask them, the ancestors, those who passed in the, did they return? Where are they? We want to know where they were reincarnated. Do they exist right now? Where, where are they? We want to know. Okay, so some people will say, hey, we have had incidents whereby a little child will have the same memory as somebody who died in the past. Remember, they are genes, they are, you know, shayateen, who know about other people and they can pass such news to other people. Remember that. Uh, the next verse I'm taking you is in Quran chapter 36 verse 50, right? I'm going to put the verse. Quran chapter... Oh, sorry, wait, let me see if I can do this. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, try to see if I can do this. So chapter 36, verse 50. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And it says, here, uh, what is this? I'm trying to see if there's a problem with this, uh, pardon me, pardon me for a minute. Aha. Uh -huh. Chapter 36, verse 50, and they will not be able to bequest, that is to make a will, uh, they will not be able to bequest, nor return to their people, right? That is those people who will be annihilated. Ah. Uh, those people who will be annihilated by God. And they will not be able to bequest. They cannot be able to make a will when God is annihilating them. Nor will they what? Return nor return to their people. So they will never even get the chance to return to their people. No. Because they are wiped out. God has annihilated them. There is not, no such thing as reincarnation and coming back. Right? Good. But then, if we are going to check the issue in the light of, uh, uh, let's see, sorry. If we are going to check the issue in the light of the, the, the youth in the cave, in Surah chapter 18, verse 9 to verse 21, right? The youth in the cave who slept for 309 years. So let's say they were dead for 309 years, right? And then they came back. They were brought back to life. Their case is different from saying reincarnation because re the concept of reincarnation is to be given a new birth in a different form. Not in the same form, in a different form. You appear differently, right? That is reincarnation, to be born in a different way. So with the youth in the Surah to look at, their, their case, we wouldn't say reincarnated. They, they were like... They were brought back in the same form, but after some years, right? 
Uh -huh. well, so I'll give further verses to prove to the point that in the Quran, there's no concept of reincarnation as the people assume, right? Uh, Salam, Maui, I see you. Uh, Salman Faris, he says, why do some people disclose the unseen and it come to pass me while God doesn't disclose the unseen? Uh, God actually discloses the unseen, but he has to cho he chooses specific people he reveals the unseen to. According to Quran chapter 72 verse, uh, verse 26, uh, uh, right? So he knows the unseen and he reveals this unseen to that the one he has approved as a Rasul. And when we say Rasul is somebody who has been given a message to deliver. So anybody given a message by God to deliver is a messenger. Right? Uh -huh. So Alaji Jani says, Salam, in the day of judgment, is there any specific language that people are going to speak? Uh, Quran doesn't mention oh, that's that type of uh, statement there. But it's obvious we will all understand the message, what whatever uh, language is going to be spoken. Because remember... <laughs> Among the signs of God is the languages we speak. So God understands every language, right? Yeah. Marun Khalif, Kungolo Salam. You're welcome, brother. No problem. I just started not long ago. Uh, okay, so let's see the notion of reincarnation. Is there any concept of reincarnation in the Quran? So I'll be giving verses to, to prove that claim, if there is or not. So I take you to Quran chapter 6, verse 27, right? Quran chapter 6 verse 27, right? Uh, let me share the screen here. So God says, And if you could see when thee, the deniers, are made to look at what? The fire. And they will say, Oh, if only we could return and not deny the verses of our Lord. And be among the believers. So if you say reincarnation, are you trying to tell us that these people who actually committed bad things, evil, and God annihilated them and took away their soul, so they are coming back in a different form? To do what? To fix things? To, to do what? What's the notion of reincarnation? So that they come and do what? They come and fix the wrongs they did in a different body form, in a different form? How? You understand? Uh, it doesn't add up. Yeah, you see, it doesn't add up. And again, then I take you to Quran chapter 6 verse 28, the same chapter. Then it says, in fact, what they used to conceal before has appeared to them. That is after they die. What they used to conceal will be made manifest to them. And even if they were returned, listen carefully, and even if they were returned, they would return to what they were forbidden for indeed they are what liars so anybody who dies wise being a bad person and then keeps telling god oh i want to return i wish i would be returned according to god even if this person is returned he would still do the same thing they have been told not to do <laughs> so that is out of the equation again we go to quran chapter 32 verse 12 right Chapter 32, verse 12, God says, And if you could see when the criminals lower their heads before their Lord, our Lord, we have seen and we have what? Head. So return us. We will act righteous. Indeed, we are certain. Huh? That is why chapter 102, that is chapter of the proliferation, it tells you, Allah <laughs> takathur makabur you see so you'll be you see hell with the eyes so now you do be plead they will be pleading oh can we can you so return us we will now be righteous no no gate of return again it's too late right no concept of reincarnation so last but the least i take you to quran chapter 23 verse 99 uh, chapter 23 verse 99 that is surah al mubin and i read up to verse 100 right 99 up to verse 100 he says until when death comes to one of them 
He says, Lord, send me back. Lord, send me back. Send you back to do what? So then he says, that I may act righteous in what I have left. Right? Then God says, day. Day. That's here. Day. Indeed, it is a word he is stating. But behind them is a partition until the day they are resurrected. That is on the day of judgment. So the only reincarnation you have is when you are raised on the day of judgment in a new form. But there's no such thing as you are going to be brought back on earth to come and do what again? I don't understand. It's just like a student who sits for exams and you have you are done writing your exams, you give the papers to the to the examiner. And then you come back again and say, excuse me, I want to go. <laughs> I need the exam papers again. What do you want to do? <laughs> now tell me, what do you want to do? It's out of the equation. You see, it doesn't stand again. That 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 doesn't stand again, right? Uh huh. Uh, you're welcome, uh, Alaji Johnny. Okay, so then I'll take you to another verse just to brief, brief that point, right? Uh, I take you to Quran chapter seventeen, verse forty-nine. Uh, this verse I'm going to quote is very, very interesting, right? It's very, very interesting. Now, this is the verse. I put it under the screen, and let's see. Here. Chapter 17, verse 49. And they say, when we have become bones and debris, that is dust, right? Will we indeed be resurrected as a new creation? Right? So a new creation here determines reincarnation, but that is on the day of judgment. You'll be raised as a new creation, but not on this earth. Right? Not like coming back to the same timeline. No. Then the messenger is asked to say, say, become stones or iron so even if you decide to become stone or iron or when you are bent to ashes huh? as i'm adding myself even if you're bent to ashes according to god this is the answer or a creation of what is greater in your bosoms so anything you can become greater than stones or iron or metal god says is greater in your bosoms then he says what and they will say who will return us the messenger is asked to say, say, the one who originated you the first time, then they will shake their heads to you and say, when is, when is it? They will ask, when is it? Say, perhaps it is near. 52, the day he, God, will call you, that you will respond with his praise and presume that you only lingered for a while. You see. So this verse I just put on the screen. <clears throat> yeah. This verse I just put on the screen is just to show you the notion of the day of judgment. The only reincarnation which exists in the Quran is the one you will be recreated as a new creation on the day of judgment. So not like you will be created new to come back again to be returned here where you come again and fix your things or to do what? What, what are you supposed to come and do? And somebody will say, oh, to be given a second chance, right? No. We are going to see the verse. I will give some verses. Uh, then you see the, the notion of clarification here. <coughs> So Salman Fari says, please clarify chapter 2, verse 29, and chapter 79, verse 27. Uh, let's see. Chapter 2, verse 29, Surah to Bakara. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, you meant chapter 2, verse 28, not 29. Right? Chapter 2, verse what? 28. That's, I think that's what you meant. Why? Right? So let's see. Chapter 2, verse 28. It says, How can you disbelieve in God while you were what? Lifeless. That is the point here. I'm watered here. The word I'm watered can mean for dead or lifeless. But you were actually lifeless in the first place. In the first place, we don't say you are dead, you were lifeless. And he gave you what? Life. 
because you you were lifeless you didn't have life just like when adam was created from clay then god blew into him the spirit before he got life so we can say he was lifeless right and then he got life so lifeless and he gave you life then he will cause you to what to die that is on earth you will die then he will give you life that is on the day of judgment he will give you life and then after he gives you the life what happened and then you will be what returned to him because after the judgment has been made now you are going to return to him right because he created you on the day of judgment when he resurrects you then you are, it's time for the question and answer you'll be giving your record, records and show like where you are going you see the point so that is quran chapter 2 uh, verse 28 okay anyways uh coming to that point he said uh father said what he said uh 29 okay 29 he said he is the one who created what is on earth entirely for you then he set up to the heaven right and then organized them as seven heavens and he is aware of all things what what exactly do you want to know in 29 faris because the verse on its own is clear it's clarified it's clear but anyways i go to quran chapter 79 verse 27 right he says are you more difficult in creation he's asking the people are you more difficult in creation or the sky he constructed it that's a question are you people are you more difficult to create or is it the sky which is more difficult verse 29 he raised its ceiling and organized it verse 29 and he darkened its night and brought forth its forenoon and then verse 30 and after that he spread out the earth the verse is clear on its own right uh -huh. it's clear on its own so far as that's that's your answer so he says which was created first the heavens slash the sky or the earth the the heavens was smoke already so he already created he created the earth first before going to the heavens if you're building a house you don't start with the roof you start with the foundation <laughs> the foundation is down faris you understand the point <laughs> you're building a house you start with the foundation you don't start with the roof so foundation start first that's the earth is the foundation everything is done then he set up to the heavens to build the sky right uh-huh so the quran has been consistent consistent the sky was still a smoke so i guess let me let me let me address this part where you can understand the point right uh i take you to that is quran chapter chapter 41 verse yeah chapter 41 verse uh verse verse 9 let me put the verse here because some people always have misconception about the cre how god created the heavens and the earth so let me take you to chapter 41 verse 9 say do you indeed disbelieve in the one who created the earth in two days he used only two days to create the earth that is a creation of the earth itself two days only according to god's calculation right not our calculation right because a, a day a day at him is thousand of our years a day at god is thousand of our years mentioned in quran chapter 22 surah to hajj right <clears throat> so the earth in two days by assigning counterparts to him that is the lord of the worlds then so that is here you can see the the, the quotation marks right it's a quotation mark so here the messenger was asked to just ask the question 
right now verse 10 and he placed there in anchors that is mountains the anchors are to to put to give a fixation to the earth right rawasia above it and blessed therein and estimated its nourishment therein within four days so it is not the earth he created in four days he created the earth in two days but the estimation of the nourishment and everything within he did it within four days right within four days it is the same for the questioners those who are asking it is the same answer you give to them so it is the nourishment he used for this to do. So it doesn't mean he's using the extra different to uh, for this. No, within for this, within the for this, right? Then verse eleven. Then he set up to the heaven, while it was smoke. So at that time the heaven was smoke. You see, and said to it and the and to the earth, come willingly. Or unwillingly they said we come willingly right so it says consequently he co completed them as seven heavens so the seven heavens wasn't there already it was smoke before God went to complete it as seven heavens so he created the earth first before he finished the uh, created the heavens right so completed them is seven heavens in what in two days so he used only two days to create uh the the heavens whilst he used four days to make the earth because out of the four days he used two days to create the earth then the other two extra days as four days he used it uh, together with the nourishment and everything so four days for the earth and two days for the heavens so that is what six days but when you are talking to somebody who is confused you say hey god says he created the earth in two days and then he mentioned four days again and he mentioned two days again so two plus four two plus two is eight <laughs> confusion then again you hear people telling you that god said he created the stars as a weapon or something no let's see what the verse says then here he says here and he inspired in each heaven its command right and we adorn the lowest heaven with what lamps he didn't say stars the lowest heavens they contain the lamps they don't contain stars stars are not in the lowest heavens right with lamps and garden right that is the estimation of the almighty the obedient so according to god that is the his estimation not his our estimation so we will always try to misconstrue what god is saying unless if we we willingly want to understand what he means right okay so here uh ak dolly says salam can you clarify tahajud is it a salat or should only should one only meditate on the quran tahajud is mentioned in quran chapter 17 verse 79 right and I shared a verse and let's see what the verse says. It says, and of the night does stay awake. So the words the word stay awake are to be vigilant. That is tahajud. Tahajad bihi or tahajud we can say. So tahajjad bihi. So this bihi, you are staying awake for the Quran, right? Bihi, to stay awake for the Quran because we use the Quran for the salat. So you stay awake with it. As a what? Superfluous. It's extra. It's a bonus that God has given us to do in the night, right? For you, perhaps your Lord will raise you to a what? A commendable position. So that the the purpose of the tahajjud is to stay awake whilst you you stay awake with the Quran, just as the prophet was instructed in Quran chapter seventy three. I take you to the verse Quran chapter seventy three, verse two to verse seven, right? That is Surah to uh, Muzammil. I put the verse here. Chapter seventy three, verse two. He says, Ya yu al Muzammil, 
Kubil Laili illa Kaligila. Get up at night for a while. Then verse 3, half of it, or decrease a little from it, or exceed over it, and intonate the Quran by what? By chanting, right? Indeed, we will cast upon you a heavy word. So God will give you a message from the Quran. Then he says, indeed, indeed, the rising at night is more stressing, and what? And more appropriately stated. Because it is stressful to get up in the middle of the night or during the night to say you are going to what? To, to stay awake whilst studying the Quran. It's difficult. Right? But it is the best time to appropriately, you know, get the message God wants to give you. That is the night time. So you, that's why you use the word tahajjad, to stay awake. That is tahajjad, to stay awake. Yeah? Aha. Uh -huh. So I've answered the questions being asked. Uh, let me see. I can allow guest people to send a request. Well, I've opened the line. You want to join as a guest, you're welcome. Send your request. I'll give you the chance to hop on and then uh, share your two cents. You're welcome. <clears throat> Feel it, know it says, please. I, I know you want to say, are you a Muslim? Because sometimes, uh, feel, feel it. I'm sending you an invite. You can join and ask me your question. You're welcome to ask me a question. I sent you an invite. Uh, feel it. Know it. You wanted to ask me a question. I'm sending you an invite. Can you join? Join. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, let me see. I think I sent you an invite. Feel it. Feel it. Know it. Yeah, you're welcome to join and ask me your question. You're welcome. Uh huh. So the point I gave, I guess, is clear enough for for people to to understand uh, what what was said. I've done forty two minutes so far. Uh, let me see what here. So let me go back to the reincarnation aspect, right? Even though I give verses which clearly stipulates, tells you to, uh, makes you know that uh, there's no notion of what uh, reincarnation in the Quran as to coming back on this earth. I take it to uh, to another verse which is in Quran chapter 16 verse 21, right? Let's see what the verse says. Quran chapter 16 verse 21. It says, they are dead. They are dead, not alive. And they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. That is, those who are dead, those people, those you invoke besides God, did not what? Create anything while they were created. So the ones you are worshipping, whether humans, whatever prominent people you are worshipping, they are dead, not alive. They do not perceive when they will but resurrected, right? And then again, I take you to Quran chapter 20, verse 55. Chapter 20, verse 55. So from it, that is the earth, we created you. So God created us from the earth. And from it to it, we will what? We will return you. And from it, we will bring you forth another time. Right? Uh -huh. So here, what people don't understand is, it's not talking about reincarnation here at all. You were created from the earth. And you will be what you uh, into it. We will return you. So into it you will return as in terms of dying, 
right and from it again god will bring you forth on the day of judgment from the earth that's why we call it resurrection right that is why it says another time uh then the next one the next verse is in quran chapter chapter 56 verse 60 right quran chapter 56 verse 60 we have predestined death among you and what and we cannot be outdone that is god and his angel saying this so death has already been predestined and we can never change that so it cannot be outdone right so i've already taken to you to quran chapter 17 verse 49 to verse 51 right but then I take you to Quran chapter 40 verse 11. Uh, this is another verse people have misconceptions about, right? Quran chapter 40 verse 11. Where there is believers, they that is believers will say, Our Lord, you caused us to die two, what? two times and gave us life two times. So we have confessed our sins. Therefore, is there any way to exit right uh -huh. now what people don't understand about this verse since because this disbelievers said we you yeah like our lord you cause us to die two times this two death is about being lifeless before and then you were given life and then you died and then you are raised again in front of god so that is having life two times and then having death two times you understand uh -huh. so it is not as if they are saying, oh, on this earth we were reincarnated, we were given two lives, and then, no, that's not the understanding thereof. So the understanding of that verse is similarly mentioned in Quran chapter 2, verse 28, as I mentioned earlier. You will understand that when you read the previous verse to that, right? Yeah, salam, brother uh, Robson. You're welcome. Uh, uh, we have... Uh, feel feel it know it you wanted to ask me a question i think your question wasn't clear enough i wanted to send you a request like a, a an invite so that you come and ask me your question right uh -huh. so if, if you're there you want to join you're welcome anybody who wants to give an input you're welcome to join right uh -huh. the, the the invitation is open if you're willing to join and ask a question you're welcome right other than that uh i don't have much energy for today i might not uh keep, stay here for long because i'm planning maybe saturday i'll do a program god willing so if you have some questions to ask before i can see what to do next right uh yeah peace to you sister nikki i see you you're welcome Robson says, can you find the original Bible or Torah anywhere? First of all, there is no such thing as original Bible because God never revealed a book called Bible. So we don't say original Bible. No such thing. Unlike when we say Quran, right? Uh, Salam Far Salman Faris, I will try to put it on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah, So you might get it on YouTube, right? I will put the a recorded version on YouTube, inshallah. So unlike when we say Bible, all that, when we say Quran, the Quran mentions itself as the Quran, and God testifies to uh, revealing a book called Quran. But when we say the Bible, there's no such thing as original Bible in the first place. And then when we say Torah, the Torah God gave the children of Israel is a stipulation of laws and judgments, right? uh the people have rewritten these books joined them with other books and they claim that is the torah so that is a uh, you know a question mark <sighs> that is a question mark because the books they are claiming is the torah has a lot of contradiction and according to god anything you have which you claim is from god with contradictions can never be from god right if he has discrepancies not from god uh Bonavir, it says reply my question please reply my question uh, i didn't see any question from you anyway Bonavir, i didn't receive any question from you 
So if you have asked a question, can you repeat your question? Whenever, can you repeat your question so that I will know the question you have asked? Now, this is the correctional officer's uh, T-shirt, right? This, this, you see it here? That's a correctional officer's T-shirt. Says the correctional officer, Baba Shwai. That's a logo, original printed, right? Original printed, machine washable, it doesn't fade. That's it. Uh, the the T-shirt quality is a very strong one. It's made in Switzerland. So the quality is very high. Uh, this will be in stock very soon where people can order if you're interested. Uh, this has to do with different, it, can, it, can, it will come in different colors as well, right? Aha, uh -huh, that's a correctional officer uh, shirt, t-shirt, which will be available. So maybe on Sunday or Saturday, I'll be wearing this to make it a lecture, God willing. So this is how it looks like, right? Uh -huh, it will be available uh, for purchase very soon in stock yeah and then we have the the great quran this is the hardcover book yeah, right the hardcover the great quran right which is about thousand pages book whoever doesn't have the copy try to get your copy on payheap.com slash natsal enterprise i have the video on uh, tiktok i have the advertisement where you can get the copy you find the link on the video I pinned it on my page on TikTok, and if you go to YouTube, you go to Facebook, you see all the videos there where you just hear the link on how to get this copy, right? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, Munavia, kindly repeat your question. Your question doesn't show, like it doesn't show anything from what you said, right? So if you remember your question, just type it so I can, I can actually know what you have asked me earlier on. Uh, Robson, coming back to your question concerning the Torah. Yeah, thank you very much. Alaji Jode, thank you. Uh, when you see, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Robson, concerning the Torah, if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5 to verse 8, they wrote the death of Moses in that book. According to God, the book doesn't have to contain anything about Moses personally. No. Because it is God who actually inscribed everything for Moses, according to Quran chapter 7, verse 145 to 146. So 145, God wrote everything for him. One chapter 7, verse 154. Also, it tells that he was given the what the the tablet. So the tablet is what it has to be re-inscribed on other papers. So what what has to do with the story of Moses himself inside? Even to the extent they are they're saying, and Moses died, and he was buried at the mountain of Moab. So how can this be the Torah? No, it's not consistent. Something is wrong. Right? Something is wrong. That's not the Torah given to uh, the Prophet. You know, unlike the Quran, when you take the Quran, you will not see where Muhammad himself is talking about himself or a story about himself. It is instruction by God, where you see physically when God is instructing him. Kul, say, when they ask you about this, say, you see it as the word of God. Right? So that's the difference. So, but anytime you are, you are dealing with a, a Christian or a Jew who wants to prove their claim from the Bible or tell you the Quran is a contradictive book, just tell them to prove the authenticity of their book first. To pre prove to you how authentic the Bible they have or the whatever book they claim is the Old Testament, New Testament, let them prove its credibility first before you even jump to the porch point where you have to speak about the Quran. Right. In order for a book to tell you Quran is contradicting itself or, you know, inconsistent, the book on its own has to be consistent with time and logic. Yeah. So let me see if I have a video here I can play for you. Let's see some of the comedian scholars and what they have to present to us. Right. Uh, let me see what can I add here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go and see some of the funny comedians, some funny scholars or funny comedians, I would say, right? Uh, 
uh, we go Zakir Raik. What did he say? I myself don't know. Huh? Doing Arabic is not a criteria to go to Jannah because I myself don't know Arabic. I myself don't know. Huh? Doing Arabic is not a criteria to go to Jannah because I myself don't know Arabic. I myself don't know. Huh? Doing Arabic is not a criteria to go to Jannah because I myself don't know Arabic. I myself don't know. Huh? Doing Arabic is not a criteria to go to Jannah because I myself don't know Arabic. I myself don't know. He says, knowing Arabic is not a criteria to go to Jannah because he, Zakir Naik, himself doesn't know Arabic. Knowing Arabic is not a criteria to go into Jannah because he, Zakir Naik, himself doesn't know Arabic, right? This is from the horse's own mouth. I'm not the one saying it, but people will be holding such people in high esteem right as their top scholar now if you ask anybody mention to be one famous top arabic native speaker who is a scholar in the world you hardly you can hardly mention even one they don't have any people who mention zakir naik mufti bank yasir kadi uh Ruben ali uh bilal phillips yusuf estes uh, you mention them none of them is an arab Khalid Yassin, keep mentioning them. They are all foreigners. <laughs> and they are all, I would say, imposters. <laughs> Seriously. They are puppets. They've been put there to, to, to you know, propagate a certain agenda or concept. Yeah, salam, sal. Uh, none of them is an Arabian, right? But this, when you're talking to these so-called people, they keep telling you, oh, you are not an Arab. You don't even speak Arabic. Who gives you the right? Oh, so Zakir Naik. He's telling you he doesn't know Arabic, but he can speak about the Islam, right? <laughs> oh my God, it's just it's just a messed up world, huh? So let's let's go to the next video. Let's see what Zakir Naik has to say. Right. Let's come for a debate, friendly debate, no problem. But I'll only debate with someone who has some standing, not with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You understand? You know, if I can get a million people for my talk largest gathering, even if we get 2%, 20,000, I will debate you. Any Tom Dick and Harry, I cannot. What my reason is, if you want to debate me, you should at least be able to gather minimum 20,000 for your speech. If I can get 2 million, you at least get 2%. Okay? If you can get 20,000 for your lecture, I'm willing to debate with you. If you cannot get, you give it to someone who can get. And there are many Hindu speakers in the world. There are many Christian speakers in the world who get 100,000 and more. In India, many people. You know Shishi Ravi Shankar. He gets audience of 100,000. I debated with him and you know the outcome of that. Have you seen that debate? Yeah. What was the outcome? It was... It what? It wasn't as I expected. Sorry? It wasn't as I expected, yeah. Oh, you, it wasn't as you expected. Yeah. But did I break any rules of the debate? Pardon? Did I break any rules of the debate? No. Did I not answer all his questions? No. Did he answer my questions? No. No. One of the most famous Hindu preacher in the world, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar. Many people call him God. Yeah, so that is the criteria Zakir Naik has put laid down, right? In order for him to debate you, you should have a mass following. You should have a lot of people who are actually following you, where he can actually... So he says, if you can pull a crowd, then yes, he's willing to debate with you. In some sense, I do understand his point. I do understand what he meant by that. Uh... But when you are dealing with the truth, you, you have to interact with people. Just like correctional officer, I come as a correctional officer's den and I give people the chance to interact. You you hop on, you face me, ask me the question. Uh, no matter how you are, I, if you, yeah, I because I know most of them are not knowledgeable, so I'll make them look stupid as soon as possible, right? And this is what people do many, many a times, right? Uh -huh. So... Uh, to just say somebody has to gather the crowd before you speak, it means if you have actually something to prove, you are just waiting 
for for the crowd to to come to, to do what to convince or to, you understand so the celebrity status is getting into their head and that's why he is giving that point uh, Salman Faiz is concerning the different types of the Quran. What is the sign for the original uh, primordial Quran? Salman Faiz received by the messenger. I found an interesting uh, point, right? Uh, I don't know how I can put it. Uh, let me see if I can put it up here somewhere. Uh, I add the source. <coughs> uh, let me open this window. Uh, 8421 and then 21185, right? I'm going to give an interesting uh, illustration here. Six thousand two hundred and thirty-six. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can add a window capture. Uh, is it window capture? Yeah. Yeah. I'll add a window capture here. So let me see what I can do with this. Now, do you see the? Th these are the number of verses in the Quran. <laughs> this window you are seeing, they are the number of verses in the Quran, right? Six thousand two hundred and thirty-six verses, right? Now, what I want you to see here now is this. Let me see what I can do here. Six thousand two hundred and thirty-six verses. Now, the first time the word the Quran, uh, Quran, the first time Al Quran is mentioned in the Quran when you open Surah Al Fatiha. And you are going into the Quran. The first time the word Al Quran is mentioned in the Quran is in Quran chapter 2, verse 185. Right? So that is the first time. First time the Quran is mentioned in the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 185. And then the last time the word Quran is mentioned in the Quran is in Quran chapter 84, verse 21. That's the last time the Quran is mentioned. <laughs> now, I'm going to prove that point to you on the screen here. It is very, very interesting, something I found very interesting to share. Right, so I'm going to put it here, uh, bring to front here. So I take you to Quran chapter 84, verse 21. That is the last time the word the Quran was mentioned, is the mention in the Quran. So here it says, And when the Quran is being read to them, they do not what prostrate or make obeisance, right? To show to show a sign of respect or uh, submission, right? That is obeisance. Right. Okay. As we saw it happen in the uh, the instance of Surah Al Jum'a, ah, chapter sixty-two, verse eleven, it happened similarly. They were standing, but they refused to do anything, and they left for their business. Now that is the last time the Quran is mentioned in the the word the Quran. Al Quran is mentioned in the Quran. That is the last chapter. Then the first chapter it is mentioned it is in Quran chapter two, verse one hundred and eighty-five. That is the first time the word Al-Quran is mentioned. He says the month of Ramadan is that in which what? The Quran. This is, we see here, Al-Quran. In Arabic here, you see it here. Sharu Ramadan al-lazi unzila fihi al-Quran hudan lil-nas. 
So that is the first time it's mentioned in the Quran, in Quran chapter 2, verse 185, right? Then again, that is chapter 2, verse 185. And then the last time it's mentioned is in Quran chapter what? 84, verse 21. So now the interesting part I want to show you is, if you write 84, 21 like this, just write it like this, 84, 21. Then you write minus eighty four twenty one minus what two one eight five because we found the first time the word Quran the Al Quran is mentioned in the Quran is in Quran chapter two verse one eighty five so let's let me put the dot here I put the columns so that is dash dash you see it the dot dot that is in the chapter you find the word Al Quran. And then in chapter 84, verse 21, like this, you find the last verse, you find the word Al-Quran in the Quran. These two num uh, above numbers, up and down. So now I take the columns out. Uh, I take the, I take them out. Now we are going to do uh, subtraction. So what happens is, if you minus the, uh, 8,421 uh, 8, uh, minus 2185, what you get is, if you minus it, what you are going to get, let me do this. You are going to get 6,236. When you minus it, you get 6,236. And that is the number of verses in the Quran. You get 6,236 verses in the Quran. Right? So whoever has the calculator next to him, you can try it and see. 84... 21 minus 2185. Just minus it and see what, what number comes. If you have the great Quran with you, uh, if you have my PDF version of the Quran, you have the great Quran with you, you can count the verses for yourself. You have a PDF, just search the number of verses, you will see it. Right? It is 6,236 verses in the Quran. I find this very, very interesting. It, is, it struck me when I saw it, right? Uh -huh. The first time you see the Al-Quran mentioned in the Quran is chapter 2, verse 185. The last time you see it mentioned in the Quran is chapter 84, verse 21. And when you minus, you get 6,236 verses exactly, precisely. Right? It is an amazing uh, you know, thing to find. It's very, very interesting. It's mind-boggling at the same time. Ah, uh, Salam Abdul Samad. Right, so we find it out. But however, coming back to the to what Salman was asking earlier. Right, Salman is asking that concerning the different types of the Quran. First of all, God never said there's a different types of the Quran. No, no way. God never said He gave us different types of the Quran. Anybody who tells you there are different types of the Quran, first of all. You take them, take them to chap, this chapter, chapter 10, verse 85, uh, chapter 10, verse 15. For anybody who tells you there are different types of the Quran, just take them to chapter 10, verse 15, right? And that's the verse on the screen. And when our verses are recited to them as what? Proofs. Those who do not hope to meet us, they say what? Bring a Quran, bring a reading, which is Quranic. You see it here, Quranic, other than what this. When we say this, it means T H I S, something in front of you, something you can see right in front of you. So bring a Quran other than this, or change it. He didn't say change them, he says change it, which is a singular pronoun, which is one thing, right? One thing not two. And then because they are not okay with what the messenger has brought, they are saying change it. Right? Uh -huh. So God is now answering by saying what? 
say you the messenger say it is not for me to change it by myself spontaneously i only follow what is inspired to be i indeed i fear the punishment of a terrible day if i should what if i should disobey my lord full stop do you see so the quran doesn't give room to say there are different types of the quran but now let's take the case let's take the case of how people say oh there are different versions there is the Warsh version there is a house version there is alduri and then they keep saying there are different versions how do we answer that when you are struck with that type of question right how how do you answer that so the point is when you take the house version they gave it the name halves god didn't give it the name halves but let's say you are confused you want to find the right version you have to examine the book quran chapter 4 verse 82 afala yatadabbaruna alquran walaw kana bin idgar la la wajidu fi ikhtilafan kathira you will find a lot of discrepancies or contradictions if it is not coming from god so whatever quran you are presented with they gave you a worse version take it start examining the book i have examined it I will not I will not buy into the worship version. No. Al Duri, I will not take that. The one they call the house version, they give it the name house version. There is no such thing as this version or that version. But let's say to for the sake of argument, you want to eradicate the confusion. I'm going to take you to a verse before I give you the answer. So I open the Quran, chapter 15. And I take you to verse, let's say, verse 94. Right? Uh -huh. And then let's say I read to, oh, sorry. Yeah, 90, let's, let's see. 89. Uh -huh. Chapter 15, verse 89. So let's see, it's on the screen. And say, indeed, I am a clear warner. Right? Here, but here, I start with chapter 15, verse 87. It says, and we have certainly given you, Muhammad alayhi salam, seven of the what? Repeated. When you take the Quran, we have seven verses, which is Surah Al-Fatiha. That, those verses are separate, concerning to chapter 2 up to 140, because chapter 2 up to 140 is a message to mankind. Whilst chapter 1 on its own is like a repeated dua that we normally use repeatedly. So repeated. And the great Quran. So we have the great Quran which contains the message as hudan linnas, as a guidance for mankind. Okay. Chapter 15 verse 88. Do not extend your eyes toward what we have what? Caused kinds of them to enjoy thereby. And do not what? Grieve over them and lower your flank to the believers. Verse 89, and say, indeed, I am a clear warner. So he has been given the message, the Quran, the great Quran, the Fatiha and the great Quran to preach to people. So let's see. Just as we have revealed to the divisive people, who are the divisive? We saw what the Jews, the Christians, the children of Israel did, right? Then God went on. The ones who have made replacements of the word Al-Quran, they have made replacements of the Quran. Just like today we have the Sunni, the Shia, the Sufi, whatever we have, making replacements for the Quran, right? 92, therefore, by your Lord, we will question them what all about what they have been doing. So expose clearly what you are commanded and turn away from the what? Polytheists, that is idolaters, right? Then he says, indeed, we will spare you the mockers who assign another God with the God. But what? They will find out. Okay, so let's leave it there. Now, the reason why I took you to the verses is to show you uh, the concept of the Quran having replacements by people, people trying to replace the words of God. They try to replace the, the, the book of God by bringing other books just as they told Prophet Muhammad in Quran chapter 10 verse 15, when he presented the verses as proof to the people, they say, They want you to change the Quran or bring a different Quran, 
right? So this is why when you are dealing with people, they will say there's the half version, there's the worst version, there's Alduri version, just to confuse your thoughts. So when you take the worst version, in Surah to Fatiha, they will say, Malik Yawbid Deed. They will say, King of the Day of Judgment. That is wrong. God is not only the king of the day of judgment. He's always a king. That is why in Surah to Nas, he says, Malik Nas. He is the king of the people, mankind. Right? So the correct reading is Malik Yawbid Deed. He owns. He is the possessor of the day of judgment. He is not only the king of the day of judgment. That is a stupid thought to ever think that God is the king of the day of judgment. What? It's just like you say, Baba Shwaib is the king of TikTok. It means you have limited me only for TikTok. Do you understand? But now put the notion of God in your head. And then somebody will say, God is the king of the day of judgment. What? God is not only the king. He is always the king. Anytime. What do you mean king of the day of judgment? He owns it. When you are the owner of the something, you are more greater than a king. Yeah? Uh -huh. So that alone gives you the notion why you should put the worst version aside. Then they go with the Aduri. It keeps going on. God wants you to investigate the book. That's how to ascertain and find the right one of when the people are trying to manipulate you, right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you, uh, Elijah uh, Joani. Sal says that's amazing. Yeah, the, the, the numbers I gave, uh, you check it for yourself, you find it how amazing it is. Yeah. Abu uh, Bakar Konte, in one of your video, you said that there is nothing like five times a day prayer. Please substantiate. Can you, can you come? Let me invite you. Come. Abu Bakr Kote, come, join me live and make your point clear so that I can substantiate my claim. <laughs> Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, I've sent you the request. Kindly join. Oh, he stepped down. Abu Bakr, can you hear me? Can you unmute, unmute your mic? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh-huh. So, Abu Bakr, how may I help you? Um, um, as I said, sometimes back I I watch one of your video where you said there is nothing like five daily prayer, composite prayer in Islam. I was a little bit confused. So I want you to at least substantiate on that area. I can to give I you can, some proof and clarity. I can substantiate that, but the point is and that particular video you watched, did you finish watching that video? Any video I make, I give a clarity in that. Yeah, but the video was too short, I think. I believe was it, it was, was it from, too short. Was it, was it from TikTok? Yes, yes, from, it, it was from TikTok. I'll okay. try to see if I can download it no, and no get problem. it for you. No, no, no problem. I, I know my videos, but I'm just saying, any video I make, I put some evidence, clarity there. If, if you don't see evidence and clarity on the video, it means you didn't look properly. Because what I do is, you see, when you are driving, I don't know, do you drive? Yes. You know when you are driving, it's impossible to see everything. Are you with what? me? Yeah, I'm if not you're driving, you. if you're driving, I'm not getting you. I say uh -huh. if you're driving a car on the road, it's impossible to see everything going on. What you see is in front of you. You are focusing on in front of you. So it's impossible to okay. see everything. Yes, of course, it's impossible. That is the point. It's impossible so, for you to see everything. Exactly. So your focus is on one side. 
And this is the distraction. When I put videos on TikTok, those videos are meant to distract people, but to call the attention of people who want to learn. So the ones who want to learn, they pay attention to every detail of the video. This is why the video I put on TikTok, they have details. They are, they are on the page. Sometimes I will have something, a verse number written on my video, but somebody will ask me according to which verse. But the verse is on the screen. Do you, do you get my point? But, 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 but my point is that you even made mention that if there is any Muslim who can point at a part or a verse in the Quran that Muslims should pray five times a day, you, you put a bet. I remember vividly. So can you prove it? I said in one of your videos, no, I, I said watch you, it. you, can you prove? Where yeah, you right? made major, you even claim that let any Muslim, I'll, I'll go, I'll go, okay, if I can prove five. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, no, I can't prove five. But you do, guys, you, do, you, do you do five? <laughs> I can't prove five. Do you do five prayers? My question prayers. is, I want you to help me prove it. No, do you do five prayers? Yes, I do. But why can't you yes, prove Yes, I do. Why can't you prove something you do? Because our scholars, because I'm doing, I'm doing it based on what our scholars in, in my country normally say to us. Abu Bakar, you say you, you drive, right? Do you drive yes. according to what they taught you, you learned, or do you drive according to what somebody says? I drive according to the rules and regulations, according to how I was taught. But you learned it. You learned the rules and regulations, and it's helping you, right? Exactly. So that's the five yes. salat you are doing. Did you learn it? Of course I learned it from my grandfather, who used are to you? take me to... Who, 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 who used to take me to the mosque? So he, 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 never prove, he never proved it to you, right? He just taught you why that without he, any. He clearly, he clearly, he clearly stated it that Quran asks us to pray five times a day. And, he, and brother, you never ask him to show you. Oh God! <laughs> um, uh, no, no, why? I never why? asked to show. Why? So if if your kids want to Only learn from you, how are you going to teach them? To, only then, when I watched that your video, yeah. After then, I begin. I began to ask scholars to tell me, but none of them, none of them. I repeat, none of them try to t show me because it's not there. So, so if by any means, I want you to clear my doubts now. If by any means you do, you you yourself did not accept that there is five times, uh, five times one should pray. Do you pray? There are uh, many times do you pray? Uh, the point is, look, don't limit Salat to prayer only. Salat is not only, only about prayer, right? Salat is having a connection with God. My, the question you should ask me, do I have a connection with God? I do have a connection with God. I'm going to give an example. Ibrahim alayhi salam, we are following his millah, his creed, right? His footsteps. Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he, when he started to understand who God was, did he ask anybody the question that, how am I going to pray? No. So how did he become a believer? Was it by salat? No, by following the rules and regulations stated by God. Aha, uh -huh. so you have to establish a bond with God first before you think about praying. I'll be giving an example. You don't respect your boss and you want to ask him to give you salary. Do you think he will add you salary? No. So but you but go... again, if you want the Quran, if you, again, you want the Quran, we, are also, we have what we call five pillars of Islam. Where? Salat was mentioned. Salat was major as well. I understand you, but where does it say five pillars of Islam? Oh God, I believe they said there are five pillars of Islam and then six article of faith. Islam doesn't have five pillars. Do, can you prove that? Oh, because it's not there. If it's there, then I can prove it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you have had, but, but, but wait, but wait, you have heard about that, right? 
they say it, but where is it? So meaning, short thing was never mentioned in the Quran. Is that what you want to tell me? Yes, the word five pillars of Islam. Listen, say five pillars of Islam. No where did God ever say Islam has five pillars? In the Quran? Yes. No such thing as five wow. pillars. I'm serious. Wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm really learning from you. Okay, if you say I'm Islam, really let, me, let me help you here. If Islam has five pillars, Prophet Noah, did he go to Hajj? <laughs> but by then Islam was not existing. Who told you? Let me give you a verse. Because I got, because, let me give you a verse. Let, I, no, wait. Okay, let okay. me Conte, let me give you a verse. Quran chapter 42, <laughs> verse 13. I'm going to put it on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, I'm seeing it. Okay, he says he has legislated for you of the religion which he what advised to Noah. The same religion he advises to Noah, and which we is we have inspired to you, Muhammad, and which we have advised to Abraham and Moses, and then what Jesus, that establish the religion, the deed, and do not be separated therein. So, are we going to separate Noah away from the deed, or is he part of the deed? Wow, now I've seen it. Okay, so if Noah is part of the deed, why, why didn't he perform Hajj if it is part of the pillars? Which Hajj? Where did he go for Hajj? Because at the time he was there, there is no place called Bakka. Yes, I, but I also believe he built that Kaaba. Who? Abraham. It was, you are talking about Abraham, but I'm talking about Noah. Oh, Noah, the first, okay. Okay, I'm getting you now. Do you understand? So there's no such thing as pillar. And Islam has been there since creation. It's with God. Quran chapter 3 verse 19. In the Dina, in the Lail Islam. Islam is not for a human being. It comes from God. So Islam is with God already. Wow. So if we say five pillars of Islam, what do, you, what do we mean by that? Where does it come from? In the book of God? Why is it not written there? Wow. What, what I am doing, see, let, let me tell you what I do, Abubakar. I'm only teaching people simplicity. That's why when you see me make a claim, uh, or when you make a claim, I will ask you where. You see, then you are, as soon as I ask you where, you see that you are confused. Because you, you realize, oh, we are only being told, but there is no proof. When I make a claim, I make claims because I know I can prove. And when I say there is nobody who can prove me otherwise, because I know there is no answer to that question. But my, my problem here is that, why is it that 95% of all the Muslim on earth, they follow short string? The they point follow is, the five pillars of Islam. Abu Bakr, now, the, point, the problem is, let me put a verse on the screen. Can you see the verse? Yes, I'm seeing it. 6116. Good. It says, if you obey most of those on earth, uh, on earth, they will what? They will mislead you from the way of God. They only what? Follow what? Assumption. And they are only what? Guessing. So people only like to guess. They don't, follow, they don't have knowledge. They only guess. So out of their guessing, they keep telling you things. When you ask them, prove to it, prove it. They say, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. They will never see them again. That is why concerning the five salat, you ask all your sheikhs you know, they don't have the answer. But they keep doing it. I think I met, I once one, one time I found one verse that acts in the Quran that says we should pray five times. Really? Well, it, it, it did not stated uh, the, the actual time. But I'll, I'll look for it. I'll look for it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's not convincing. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I translated now, the, the full Quran, right? I've translated the full Quran. Okay. And I'm telling I've you, seen it. 
I'm telling you, may God bear me witness. There is no such thing as five salat in the Quran. Hamza salawat is not there. Okay. Wallahi okay. I'm not joking with you. It's not there. I'm doing my videos. Mm. That is why I organize correctional officers then, so that people can jump on my program and prove me wrong. That's why I come here. Okay. They don't have okay. the answers. The scholars have been lying to us for years. They don't have. Don't think because they do some little Arabic, you think they are knowledgeable. I do. They don't do anything. My my problem is you still you are still not getting me. How comes ninety eight percent of all Muslims they do follow? The, they are, they, the, the, the pillar of Islam. They are mushriks. They are not Muslims. You want me to prove to you? Yes. Okay. I opened the verse for you on the screen. Then you check what the Quran says. It's not me saying it, but I'm going to show you what God says in the Quran. Quran chapter 12, verse 106. He says, and most of them, that is the people, when you start from above, you see what he's talking about. He's talking about the people. And most of them, do not believe in God except while they are what idolaters that is mushriks. Most of the people you see on earth do not believe in God except while they are what mushriks. You think they are Muslims, but to be honest, they are mushriks, they are not Muslims. Are you with me? Okay, okay, nice and I can, I, can prove, I can prove to you why I, they are. I, I would still do my research, yeah. yeah kindly, my, my, my line is getting break. I don't know, I'm oh, not okay. getting you, yeah. I can it's see breaking. You. I'm not getting you. I can see your yeah, network yeah, yeah. that the signal shows yeah, yeah. Thank you, you have, Thank you you have one much. side only, but no problem. We keep in touch again. I'll be on TikTok live next week, so you can keep in touch. And I'll be on Facebook or YouTube tomorrow okay. uh, on Saturday. So okay, bro. Nice, nice talking to you, bro. Yeah, thank you very much. Peace out. Peace. Okay, okay, I'll come. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was uh, Abu Bakr Conte who just joined us. Uh, okay, Salam, uh, uh, Ali Mohammed. I see you. Salam, uh, Don Don D Ila. I see you. Salam. Uh, okay, Sisala Monta was replying Abu Bakr Kondi, okay? Uh -huh. The reason why I decided to bring Abu Bakr Kondi on, uh, the point is, sometimes when people are in the comment section, there are certain things they write, you might think they have authority. They ask the question as if they have the authority. So according to the reason why I brought Abu Bakr on, he wrote in the comment section, he says, in one of your video, you said that there is nothing like five times a day prayer. Please substantiate. That's what he wrote. So in this perspective, if I don't bring him on to face me, you might think he has authority and he knows what he's asking me like, you know. So this is why usually I want people to face me. Come, correction officers then, then I put them to the test. I push them to the wall. Then they start to confess or you can see the level of their understanding right and if i'm here to manipulate the people i wouldn't do that i wouldn't give you the chance to even interact with me i'll be hiding i'll be running away but many a times their scholars think when i tell them come face to face they hide and then they use fake profiles and then ask me questions and then they think i'll waste my time i don't even know you for two seconds why would i waste my time typing my answers back to you <laughs> huh? something which took me years to study you just take one second to type. Hey, if you know you, you know the Quran. Can you prove to us? How do you do this? Why would I waste my time sitting to answer you? No, I'll bring you on face to face. Then, voila. The people will see how messed up. You see? Uh -huh. So, uh, thanks to Brother Abu Bakr Kote when he came, uh, that is the point. I wanted him to actually see how the scholars are manipulating people and the things they've been told, which are not true. But we keep holding them in high esteem. You understand? And that, that is a problem, right? That is a very big problem. 
Uh, so before another caller join, I've done one hour 30 videos. Before another caller should join, let me see. I can play the next video. Uh, let's see which video I can play here. Let's come for it. Oh, sorry. Uh, we are done with the king rank. Let's find who can I bring? Uh, yeah, Yasir Kadi, right? And this video is very, very ridiculous. <laughs> it's very, very ridiculous. Let's see this video. <laughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how many messengers did Allah send? How many Rasul? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, 310 and something. And this number is something that seems to have some type of power to it because that is the exact number of Badr, right? And it is also the exact number of of 310 and something. Uh, well, of course, Rasul, yes. And it is also the exact number of the people of Talut who crossed over the river. فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ طَالُوتِ بِالْجُنِّ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مُتَلِيكُمْ بِالنَّهَرِ فَمَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي When David and Goliath had the fight, and Talut took his army, right? The people who crossed over after that were around 310 and something. So this number, some seems to be recurring in a number of times. So the Prophet said, how many Rasul? The Prophet said, 310 and something, a large quantity. Meaning don't trivialize, just because it's 310, don't think it's trivial. Their quality, their quantity is large, 310 and something. So he asked him, and how many Prophets were there? And so he said, 124,000. 124,000. This hadith is in Muslim Muhammad, and it is inshallah ta'ala hasan, authentic. And this is another indication that Rasul and Nabi are not the same. And from this we derive, every Rasul is a Nabi, but not every Nabi is a Rasul. Risala is higher. Like, seriously? Like, like, seriously? Ha! Huh. What is wrong with these so-called people they call scholars? 310 and something. And he said the exact number. You are mentioning the, the number of people. You said 310 and something. So the number of people are in decimals now. What? Number of people. And you say it's exact number. 310 and something. And academically, these people are, called, are holding PhDs. Degrees. And this is a scholar, Yasir Kadi. Oh my God. 310 and something. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Dream says he sounds like he has no certainty in the hadith. He, he, he wasn't he wasn't certain. He was telling the people, yes, of course, the, the Rasul, the Rasul. Yeah, the hadith says so. So yeah, we go with that. So these same people are the ones saying the Prophet married a CCSO girl. They they uphold such nonsensical things, you know, they are okay with it. They don't see anything wrong with such things, you know. Of course, Yasir Kadi have done videos recently, you know, point pointing out doubts in the hadith books and how the narrations don't make sense. But it's is it's ridiculous, you know. It's it's <laughs> Allah, Allah, we should recognize that these sectarians are just something else, you know. <laughs> I drink beer, and I'm proud of that. I drink beer, and I'm proud of that. But the beer I drink, <laughs> before you quote me for that, is from Saudi Arabia, and it has like 2%, maybe 3% alcohol. And it's legal and it's halal. One says, oh, it has alcohol. <laughs> Akhi, if I drink half a pack, nothing happens. I drink beer. <laughs> and I'm proud of that. <laughs> hey, this call is there. And, and, uh, and he has a, this one particular video. Let me see if I can play the other video. He has one particular video. And he's going to explain why he However, said... This is not our question. Did you, Sheikh Asim, say 2% to 3% in a, a drink is permissible because it does not waste? Yes, I did. Do you still stand by this? No, I don't. What do you mean? Akhi, when I 
talk about Islamic issues. I don't talk from my own self. I, it, it, I'm not a scholar. I don't come up and think, hmm, yeah, I think this is halal, this is haram. He said when he speaks about Islamic issues, he's not a scholar, right? So he doesn't just come and say, hmm, this and this. This same person says, I drink beer and it's halal and it's from Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and this same guy who is doing consultation, he does counseling and you have to pay him $100 for, I think, how many minutes, 30 minutes or so. He does counseling online, right? <laughs> Asim al Akim. He does counseling. Somebody who says he's not a scholar, right? He's from Saudi Arabia. And this same man says, I drink beer. And now he came back to clarify his point. Yes, he admitted he made a mistake. But now he's saying he's not a scholar. If you're not a scholar, why are, why are you talking about Islam? Why are you even giving people uh, counseling? But this is, this is the puppet we have. Right? Uh, so is 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 just something else. These people are, I don't know what to say. They are very very ridiculous, right? Uh huh. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I've done one hour forty five minutes. I think I'll bring that topic to an end. If nobody is asking a question, I will I will have to go and get some rest. It's it's late here. Uh, if you have. Any question you want to ask before I go? If not, I, I will I will be bouncing uh, very soon, right? Uh, this replay I'll be putting it on YouTube, inshallah, tomorrow, and then hopefully on Saturday, if I'm I'm, I'm well and able, I will be on uh, Facebook, YouTube live, and then we we have further discussions, right? And like I said, this is the correctional officers' day. I would have preferred for the sectarians to join me, hop on, let's have a discussion. Uh, but unfortunately, they are not coming, right? I don't know if now they are scared of the correctional officer because of my logo. <laughs> and thanks to uh, one brother, brother Mohammed, I appreciate his uh, you know, support, uh, basic Canada. But other than that, uh, uh is 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 a pity you know it's funny it's, it's a pity but what i what the correction officer what i do is i want to exhort people to study to learn uh to find the truth so ladies and gentlemen this is the correction officer's day i have to save my energy for another day if i stay too much i'll spoil it so thank you all for your time i appreciate the support your presence your your you know your messages thank you all uh and i'll say this is where i have to bring the topic to an end and inshallah we keep in touch uh